Greetings, my fellow music lovers. First of all, thank you for 150 subscribers. I have a Patreon now, but more about that at the end of the video. Today we'll be taking a deep look into Gleam by Sevish, a song that passed half a million views on YouTube a while ago. It's in 22 tone equal temperament, so before we get started, we need to go over the notation. The fifths of 22 EDO are sharp, which makes major intervals even sharper, and minor intervals flatter. Luckily, 22 EDO still has great thirds, even if they are not easily accessible through the chain of fifths. To get around the cumbersome fifths, we use arrows attached to accidentals to raise or lower the pitch by one Edo step for each arrowhead. Among other things, this lets us avoid the nonsensical spelling C, D sharp, G for the C major chord and instead spell it as C, E down natural, G. Here's the chromatic scale, notated flatwise and sharpwise. Technical viewers may recognize this as a notation for 5 limit just intonation, where the arrows represent small modifications by syntonic commas. This is indeed the meaning here. 22 EDO is not a mean tone temperament, and instead stretches the syntonic comma over twice its original size. This literally means that there is no mean tone. That is, the whole tone comes in two flavors. There's the major whole tone, from C to D, you get by stacking two fifths and dropping down an octave and the minor whole tone from C to D down natural that has a 5 limit flavor. Stacking both gives us the major third. With that out of the way, let's start analyzing the song. Gleam is in 5-4 time, which gives it a characteristic rhythmic push and pull. The song opens softly enough with the high passed fussing synth repeating a melodic figure with echo. It starts by going down a minor 6th and up a minor 7th, giving the figure a melancholy vibe, which perfectly complements the major at 9 chord swelling up in the background. I am ever grateful to Sevish, as he was kind enough to provide me with the original MIDI data. This means that I know for a fact that this cheeky little passing 10 Edo step interval is an undecimal super fourth. There's only one more of these in the whole song, but I think it's cool that fractions involving 11 get featured. The fussing synth finishes by filling out the major 7th on an F major 9th chord, and we get a second hit of the chord where the effect stack goes crazy with distorted feedback. I've only approximately notated where the resulting harmonics go, but they sure are awesome. With the intro done, we have the main harmonic motif of Gleam, a vamp from F major 9, to E down natural minor 7th. I should point out that while I'm notating the song as if it was in F Lydian, it's closer to G sharp Lydian. The notation is complicated enough, so I'm transposing to get rid of the key signature. After switching between the chords a couple of times, we start building up this massive F major 9 chord, but then the F in the bass switches to an E down natural, and we realize that we were building an A down natural minor 7th chord instead. We return back to our vamp, this time with the sharp 11th extension characteristic of the Lydian sound. But hold on a minute! 22 tone does not have a Lydian scale. Well it does, but only for septimal harmonies. So what's going on? 
What Sevis is doing here is using two independent stacks of fifths to trick us into hearing familiar harmonies in a Zen harmonic setting. Taking the root note from one stack always builds a major chord, while taking it from the other always results in a minor chord. By limiting the scope of the harmonic exploration, the result sounds coherent even if the resulting scale is a mess with steps of all sizes. I am switching to a piano roll here because what happens next makes little sense on the staff. Sevis takes the A down natural minor chord introduced previously and slides it down chromatically to G down natural, all the while going the opposite direction with the piano in the high register, resulting in quite exotic chord extensions. One reason for doing this is that it just sounds cool and zen and gives you that whoa feeling in the belly. Why wouldn't you divide a major whole tone into four parts when you have the chance? But there could be a harmonic reason as well. You want to use this specific form of the seventh chord as the dominant here, because it lines up with the stack of fifths used for the major chords. In addition to having a smaller harmonic distance to the tonic, it also packs a bigger punch by lining up with the seventh harmonic, as opposed to the five limit minor seventh. The issue here is that going from the A down natural minor chord to the C 7th chord directly features jumps of both the minor and the major whole tone at the same time. Going on a four step harmonic roller coaster helps to draw attention away from the finer details of the voice leading. We repeat the main section one more time with the square lead joining in as well. The lead mostly plays chord tones, but does its own thing during the chromatic section before resuming a functional role in anticipating the tonic F during the dominant C7 chord. This function is quickly subverted though by doing a slow enclosure on E down natural, the fifth of the final A down natural at nine. This surprise Picardy third ending recontextualizes the main section as emulating A down natural minor instead of F Lydian. We could even argue that the final chords are not real dominant sevens, but stable of barbershop septimal chords built on this newfound tonic. In 22 tone, these two types of chords coincide, but Sevis confirmed that he is doing autonal 4, 5, 6, 7s intentionally here. Heading into the next section, we first repeat the motif of dropping down from F major to E down natural minor, and then use this wonderfully ambiguous set of four notes as a dominant of sorts, pulling us back to F major. After that, things get a little crazy when we hit an E up flat 9 chord out of nowhere. With this 4, 5, 6, 7 autonal chord, we are leaving functional harmony behind and can relish in the septimal stankiness. We switch back to F and then repeat the main harmonic motif, but now up from A double up flat major to G up natural minor and back. I really don't know what the next few chords are doing other than closing out a super pipe cycle, but those 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 autonals sure are stanky. Unfortunately, it would be a big detour to properly explain what Super Pipe Temperament is, so I'll do that in a follow-up video. The section repeats and the roach joins in on the fun, this time finishing on a glorious undecimal autonal chord, implying the harmonics 20, 24, 30, 36 and 55. For the next section, we drop out the chords and switch to a more intense square bass and overdriven drums. 
The lead synth outlines a progression from F major to E down natural minor and A down natural minor to stay thematically consistent with the rest of the song. For the second round, the lead repeats exactly as before, but the bass draws a mean curve ball by walking up away from the tonic only to land right back on it at the end. All of the built-up tension is released in the bridge section, where the distorted delay washes over you. We even abandon the rhythmic tension inherent in 5-4, and replace it with straight quadruplets swelling in from the background. To finish things off, we crash back into the main section, adding a lot of rhythmic interest in the bass, even if most of the harmony is already familiar at this point. On the second repeat of the final section, the lead synth joins in and quotes a melodic passage from the bridge before converting it into a happier major version to match the chords. The drums drop out for the third and final repeat of the last section and the song closes out with a melancholy A down natural minor at 2 chord to avoid any cheesiness that would be associated with ending on a Picardy third. The inverse Picardy third works especially well in 22 tone as there's only one Edo step between minor and major in this tuning. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you would like to support my work, go to patreon.com slash frostburn. You'll get access to behind the scenes material like the MuseCore file used to transcribe Gleam in this video and a mention at the end of each future video I make. Until next time.